Hello, I'm Kenan Prophet. Welcome to another Blender Branch tutorial. In this tutorial, you're going to be learning some basic visual effects tips. You're going to learn how to create a mask in Blender and animate that mask. And you're going to learn how to create a basic fire simulation and composite that with real footage to create this firepower visual effect. And I have footage that I've taken, or you can use your own footage, or you can download my footage which is underneath the description of this video. So I'm just clearing my scene right now and um, positioning my camera sort of in the middle of it. I pressed Alt-R to clear the rotation of the camera and I'm just trying to get it flat, sort of somewhere really easy to work with, with our footage. And that's good. Now what I wanna do is go up to this top and change it to motion tracking and open and we're going to open the footage that we have and it is um, right here footage hand open clip and here it is this is me out of focus because I wanted my hand in focus <laughs> so don't judge my footage even though it is slightly overexposed anyway it's alright it's not a big deal so um, this is the motion tracking. We're not actually going to be doing any motion tracking. We are going to use this later for the masking section. Um, but for now, what we can do is just set scene frames over here on the left side. And that sets our timeline to the length of our footage. And we also want to prefetch all the frames. Oh, I'm going to go to frame one for that. And it just caches those in. And that makes it easier. It's basically I just move my hand back and forth and we're going to add fire to that. Very nice. So that's good. Um, we're done with that for now. We'll come back to that later. For now, let's just change back to default up here at the top. I'm going to press in to bring up the sidebar and I'm going to select background image, add image, change it to just the camera view and movie clip. We want to uncheck camera clip and load in that footage. It should already be there because we've loaded it in the motion tracking tab. I'll press N to get rid of that sidebar. So now we're able to see um, our footage, what it would look like through the camera. And pretty cool. Now what we want to do is get our fire going. And it's going to be really simple. Basically, I'm just going to put my cursor sort of where my hand is. I'll press Shift A, add in a sphere. And just scale that down and actually I'm gonna to go to top view and sort of make it a little bit farther away so it's closer to the center that way we can scale this up and that way the scale of the objects just a little bit bigger and I'm just gonna scale it along the x-axis make it sort of an oval shape so it fits my hand and obviously you have to use your imagination kind of visualize where that oval would be if you know, it were behind my hand sitting in my palm. And that's pretty good right there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this guy, and this is what I was talking about. If you wanted to motion track my hand and then have it parented to that, to an empty or something, you could do that. Mm, good coffee. <clears throat> but I'm just gonna do everything manually because I found it's a little bit smoother and it, it works just fine. It doesn't take that much time. So what I'm going to do is just hit record down here on our keyframing animation. And we're going to sort of map out the important parts of where this oval is. So um, what the record button does, if you don't know, it automatically records any movement you do really with anything. So it's very easy for animating, but uh, if you forget that it's on, it can get you in trouble <laughs> sometimes. Um, so I'm going to jump through the frames and basically just move, scale, and rotate this oval, sort of how I picture, you know, it actually fitting in my hand if I were holding this object. So I'm going to jump every 10, 20 frames, get the big motions out of the way, and we'll go back through and do the small ones. Again, it's a little bit tedious, but... Um, you know, every visual effect is. <laughs> you just have to kind of do these things. All right. 
So here it sort of rotates around, maybe like that. Sort of rotates more. Because we're not doing any camera tracking, you have to create um, manually sort of the 3D rotation of the object. And since it is just flame, it, it's really not that much. Um, you know, you're not going to notice that we didn't camera track our scene. And so our camera's not actually moving around in 3D space, but, you know, you can sort of fake the look of that. And that's what I like doing. I like these simple effects that look really cool and <clears throat> they're really easy to do. They don't take too much time while I say that. I don't really know how much time this is going to take. <laughs> okay, so I think we're, yeah, there I close my hand. So what I'll do, I'll sort of bring it in like this, scale it down. And then when I clench my hand, I'll just sort of scale it way down, maybe spin it a few times. That way it sort of like that. That's nice. So now if we just play this, um, you can see it sort of follows my hand. It's not bad, actually. I don't even know if there's that much we have to clean up. Because it is fire. Fire is random, so it's pretty good. I'll just jump through here and maybe reposition every few frames. But I think it's pretty good. Again, you can get as specific as you like with this, or you can just be as general. Maybe you just want it to look like your hand is on fire or something, in which case you wouldn't have to be very specific at all. <laughs> I'll rotate that, maybe like that. That's pretty good. That didn't take too much time. All right. Let's get one in here. Let's play that, see what that looks like. I'm pretty happy with that. We're going to call that good for now. All right. Now what we want to do, I'm going to select this or an object here. I'm going to turn off record, first of all. That's important. I'm going to just press W, subdivide it, and then down here under Fractal, I'm going to just sort of slide that out just to crinkle our sphere a bit, or our oval. That just gives us some sort of a messy look. And we can smooth that out by smooth shading. It's not that important, but just to sort of change a little bit where those particles shoot out from. And speaking of particles, we're now ready for the particle system. So. With that sphere selected, let's come over here to the right-hand panel, select our particle system, and new. We'll name this particle system fire. And let's do, um, we'll do about 44,000. Might seem like a lot, but it'll make us some nice fire. And the start and end frames, we want it to start at See, when I sort of open my hand right there, so maybe frame 58, star frame 58. And the end frame, you, we want it to end sort of at, right as I'm closing my hand, maybe 347. And the lifetime, we're, we're gonna set this to really short two. And let's just go through here. Um, first of all, let's make sure these particles are shooting out, and they are. That's good. So let's set the Z axis. We'll set that to 2, so it shoots straight up. And the X and Y, we'll just set these to 0.5, so there's a little bit of randomness going on. So speaking of random, we'll set that to like 0.4. Normal, 1.5, and tangent, 0.5. We can turn this rotation up a little, too. That just gets our particles going in more of a random manner, which is what you want with fire. Okay, good. 
now the fun part with this object selected I'm going to um, go down here to object oops object quick effects quick smoke make sure you're in cycles before you do that because we're using cycles I'm just going to press S and X sort of scale that along the X axis and jump to the first frame position it sort of around that so it's sort of in the center with plenty of room up here and that's good and now with our domain selected I'm gonna hold down shift select this object here and press control P and parent that to the object so now wherever our object moves our domain moves with it and that's very useful for just obviously you don't want you don't want the domain too big so it takes forever to render um, and you know you don't you don't waste render time and all that and obviously you don't want the flame hitting the side of the domain box okay so now with this domain selected let's come over here to the physics panel and uh, we want to do a few things we want to check smoke adaptive domain we can change the resolutions up just a bit for now we'll change it later um, and then instead of selecting flow over here you want to select the actual object um, sometimes you have problems if you if you select that it changes the domain to the flow or it doesn't know what you're doing so just select the object and the flow source currently is that sphere so if we were to watch that um, smoke would come out of our sphere and we don't want it to do that we want it to do the particle system so change it from mesh to particle system and there you see the particle system we created fire it's right there now in order to be able to watch this uh, we have to save our file so I'm going to do save as and just save it over I've recorded this a couple different times a couple different ways just because I wanted to find the absolute best way no actually it was just many failed attempts <laughs> okay so now that we've saved it uh, underneath smoke cache we have these settings available to us they're not available unless you save them so what we want to do is set the start and end of these to the same as our particle system which is start frame 58 and frame 346 so I'm going to go here start 58 346 for the end and so now that enables us to be able to see uh, what's going on with our object and we have smoke coming out but we want it to be fire so with our flow object selected let's change it from smoke to fire and now let's check that out see what that looks like there we go some nice firepower and we want to select initial velocity because that looks even cooler Um, now a few settings we want to change with this domain selected what we can do is uh, it's like dissolve that way we don't get any of this fire hitting the edges so it's not quite as high if we go down to maybe a value of three we can see what that looks like if I just boom there that's looking better it's not quite as high it's more of that ball of fire coming out in all directions is pretty cool that's really right about where we want it if you find yours is too high you can adjust some other settings you could select your object go to your particle settings change the lifetime to lower or maybe the z-axis to lower um, so it's not the particles aren't shooting up quite as high that's all up to you you could also change the time scale a little bit turn it down that changes the height of your object as well and really the overall speed of it but I like that. I like where I like the look of it. Sort of just kind of a messy fire all over the place. So we're off to a good start. I'm gonna oop. We're off to a good start. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And if we just do a preview render by pressing Shift Z, we can see what it looks like, which currently is nothing. <laughs> sort of a little bit of smoke in there. Um, and the reason being cycles really is awesome it adds a material setup already for you um, but for some reason in the newest versions of cycles or blender they only have a smoke part
part set up. They took away the fire. Um, but it's really easy to do the smoke. So I'm just going to press Shift D to duplicate this attribute. By the way, I'm in, I switched to the node editor and we have our domain selected. And if you come over here to the materials, this is the um, material that's currently just added automatically for us, which is very nice. So I've duplicated this attribute node and instead of density, we want to write flame. And I know there's a lot of different ways to create fire, but this is sort of a really simple way. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'll press Shift A and come down here to Converter. And we want to add in a color ramp node. So I'll plug in factor into the factor of that. And now Shift A, Shader, Emission. And since fire is light, we want a pretty good value, so emission of 5. So now if I press Shift-Z, you can see we have these colors being em emitted um, as a light. And this is what's going to be our fire material. So with this color ramp node, we want to map out a basic fire material. So it's dark on the very edge and maybe a bright red on the very tip of it. I'm going to add in another, I don't, I don't know what you call these things, another little node type of thing. Make it an orangey, yellowy color. We want that to last for a lot of it. Um, and we can add in one more. I sort of find the more variations you add in there, kind of the more realistic it looks sometimes. Sometimes it's a little tricky. That's pretty good. Pretty cool effect there. Now we are still seeing our little object here. We don't really want to see that. Our emission object. So I'm going to select that, come over here to particle system, and uncheck emitter. So now if I look through the camera and press Shift Z, we see just the fire. And that's what we want. That's pretty cool. I want to just sort of play with a few more settings. Um, I checked initial velocity, but I want to see what it looks like without that. I wonder if it's a little bit smoother. No. Okay. Sorry, that was just a curious thought I had. It's better. Make sure initial velocity is checked. It'll look better. I do want to just sort of right here, it looks like this guy could be a little bit more over here maybe. I'm just going to hit record and change that. And then unrecord. Whoop. Oh. Final Cut Pro wants my attention. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So things are looking good, but obviously now it's the fun part, the compositing part where we composite our fire with our actual video. So I'm going to drag this down, give us some more space here. And I'm going to do a test render. So what I'll do is check transparent underneath render and come over here to the layers. And we want to select just this top layer. We'll change the layer name to fire. And I'll put the samplings up to about 24 for now. I'll just hit render. I know the samplings are really low, but with blurs and stuff, um, it'll look okay. And then for our final render, we'll obviously boost the resolution of our flame, frame, flame and the samplings. Okay, so there it is. It doesn't look like much. It's rendered on an alpha channel. So now we go to compositing up here in the top and select use nodes and backdrop. I'm just going to pull these out. I'll press shift A and I'm just going to search for a viewer node and switch that over to that. So there we have our fire. <clears throat> I'm going to press N to get rid of that sidebar. And now um, if we come down to, uh, I don't know where it is, I'm going to search for it, movie clip. And if we just select this drop down menu, that loads in our footage. So now to get this underneath the flame, we need an alpha over node. So I'm going to search for that alpha over and drop that in. I'll drag the image of this to the top of this alpha over node and voila. But the scale is way off. So that's easy to fix. Shift A, search for a scale node. I have a really bad habit of searching for nodes. 
but it's all right. So now I'm just going to change that from relative to render size and boom, firepower, just like that. And right away I noticed a few things. I think there's a little too much red in, in the tips of that for my liking. Uh, so it's really easy to fix. I'm going to, you can fix it from the compositing. I'm going to select this right here, change this side to the node editor. Just sort of drag that out so that red is a little bit less. I'll hit render again. Show you how this works. Render, render, render. If there's ever anything that makes you want to go out and buy the new Mac Pro, it's rendering in Blender. Okay, so now we have blackness because we don't have the composite node plugged in. But if we just escape, it gets rid of that. And that's looking better, it's smoother. Cool. Um, now, if you wanted to just leave it like that, where it looked like your hand was on fire and you were just holding, you know, human torch like, you could. And that would be fine. Um, but if you want to make it look like sort of you're holding a ball of fire that's coming up out of your hand or something like that, then you'll need to do a bit of masking and uh, I guess rotoscoping. And it's not as terrifying as uh, it sounds, it, but it is tedious. And now since this tutorial is part um, a masking tutorial, that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. That's not that bad. So well, what we're gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna go back to default, escape that render, and I'm going to add a bit more resolution to this flame. So I'm going to come over here and check high resolution, and change the divisions to maybe 54. And now um, this is going to take a while to bake. You can play it if you want to, but it's going to play very slowly, frame by frame. That's not that bad, I guess. And you could watch it all the way through. What I like to do, though, I'll just hit pause and bake. And that bakes the rest of that so that we we are able to watch it. It'll it'll be cached in down here, this gray line. It'll go whoop, all the way to the end, and uh, you'll be able to watch it a little bit smoother. And that's just going to help us with our masking and compositing and everything else. But you can see that uh, number since we did have high resolution checked, it's going pretty slowly. That'd be about. It's a little bit faster than if you were to actually play it and watch it, um, but it's still pretty slow. So what I'll do is uh, not make you listen to me talking through this, and I'll just skip to when it's done. So see you in a bit. All right, and it is done. You can see it is nicely baked in. And if we just watch this, I'm going to save it first, just in case Blender gets any great ideas about crashing. So there we go. Our Fires a lot higher resolution, looks a lot sharper. If I just do a, I'm gonna, yeah, just do a test render here. Press render. Okay, so there we go. Uh, there's our fire composited over top of our hand, and it looks pretty messy, quite uh, chaotic. So um, you could leave it like that if you want your hand to look like it's on fire, but what? What I'm going to do, like I said, is um, sort of cut out my hand with masking and make it look like I'm sort of holding that fire in my hand. So let's go back to the motion tracking tab, change it from tracking to mask. I'll select new mask and we'll just name this hand. And the way this works, um, if I just start maybe right here. Well, the fire doesn't come out till frame 58. We'll start at frame 58. Drag this up, give us our, ourselves some more room. We don't really need all that anyway. All right, now this is pretty easy. All you do is um, hold down control and click, and then just keep clicking. I'm just gonna click around this hand here do, do, do. And this is definitely the tedious part of 
visual effects of any kind. Now I'm sort of taking the inside to the, you know, the outside of these fingers are blurry and I'm not, I'm trying to just sort of do the inside because what we'll do is we'll blur this mask. So um, we don't want, you know, if it's showing something, we don't want it to be my shirt or something. We want it to be that light color. I don't know if that made sense. That probably didn't make any sense at all. <laughs> what I'm talking about is I'm not going around here, you know, sticking sort of to the inside. And we're just clicking along here. What I've heard is if you're, if you were a um, rotoscoping artist in Hollywood, or, or a visual effects artist, I should say. Uh, you would do this every day for 10 hours a day. And it'd probably be more fun to rotoscope, you know, Chris, Chris Evans or something like that than it would be to rotoscope my hand. <laughs> but yeah, people do this same type of thing. They have different software and all of that and programs I'm sure that make it easier but the gist is there okay so um, basically it's anywhere where you don't want there to be fire so I think I noticed in the render there was some fire over here we want that to be on the um, we want our hand to sort of be in front of that I think we'll see um, so this doesn't really matter, this part down here, so I'm just going to cut that around and press Option C to connect it. And there we go, we have our hand. So now I'll show you what that does. We're on frame 58. Um, and actually, before we do that, we have record selected. I'm going to press record. And this is our mask. Now this is our hand mask. And we can animate this mask. So. We have a keyframe dropped in here at frame 58, but my hand moves over here, so we have to move this mask. And this is where it really gets annoying and people probably give up and never try to do anything like this ever again. <laughs> but because we're gonna be patient with it, uh, we'll get through it. So now you have to um, reposition the mask. You have to sort of always keep in mind where that fire is and what, you know, which part of your hands are going to be in front of the fireball, which part of your hands are sort of holding the fireball. Again, you can get as specific as you would like or as general. For these, I'm going to sort of create a box, drag them over, rotate them to the side. And I'm not going to bore you with doing this entire hand. I'll either speed it up or just skip ahead for you because the important thing is just showing you how to do it. And you can do it on your own. I went a little too far over with that. And the nice thing about this being fire we can blur all these edges. They won't be perfect and no one's going to really care because there's oh, the fire on his hand. That's not normal anyway, so it's not like they're going to notice if part of your pinky appears to have fire coming through. <laughs> That's a rough Monday. Yeah, my hand's set on fire. Rotate that around. Fit that in place. And now for this guy... Just move it all down, rotate it. And the rest of this doesn't really matter. Just drag it out. Okay, there you go. Now if uh, if you examine that keyframe with this, you see it's in place at frame 58, and it's short as stutters and goes to frame 86. So now what we're doing is sort of just a general we'll jump every few frames, put it in place, and then go back later. Like I'll jump another 
I don't know, 20 or so frames to over here and grab A to select all of these, grab that mask. And this is way off here, so I have to really get creative. Now we'll put all of this in place. Just pressing C to create a selecting circle. I'll rotate that around. Press C again. Select all of this. I had a, um, wasn't really a job offer, but, you know, I have, every now and then I get an email for a job that someone somewhere wants me to apply for. And uh, so recently I got one last week. It was a rotoscoping artist, which is similar to what we're doing right here. And uh, I thought about it. I was like, hey, you know, I'm not good at it, but I understand. I could get good. And then I st started making this tutorial, and I thought, mm, nah, <laughs> someone else can have it. Uh, just because it's not it's not boring, especially if you got coffee or something, or you want to listen to some music. Um, it's just really tedious, and depending on the situation, you might have to be incredibly specific and precise. I think that's why people use green screens so much. So they don't have to cut out, you know, if you're doing a whole scene, you don't want to have to cut out people's bodies. That's what I meant about the rotating. How did I do that? I guess I selected one of these and grabbed it. You can rotate around and that might be easier for you. You can rotate and scale this. You know, you can maybe just do a few vertices and then smooth it out with this thing. Um, I like just sort of these points and we're going to blur them all anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter how you mask. I'm just going to grab all of these and sort of drag them out and put these ones closer to the thumb. Okay. Oh yeah. Got to get rid of that big gap. And that one. I know, fun stuff, fun tutorial. There we go. Create a pretty good mask there. Um, so now we can sort of see it follows that, gets in place at frame 111. And what we'll do now is go back later and fill in some of these gaps. So right there, it's way off. So I'll select everything, sort of put it in place. And that's when it really gets easier when you're just filling in the gaps. Um, so it's good. If you go frame by frame, it's going to really drive you nuts. <laughs> but if you do every 20 frames or so and then go back and sort of fill in the places where it gets off, then that's way easier and easier to manage. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'll show you what that mask has done. So. I'm going to go back to default and I'll escape this render here. And if I just play this, we want to have a stop on frame 111. Frame 111. There we go. So that's where we did our last uh, keyframe on our mask. I'm going to uncheck record for now. And I'll just render this. See what it looks like. And I'll show you how to get that mask in place. And uh, should be pretty cool. I really love coffee. I I always always have it pretty much whenever I'm working on Blender. Okay, there we go. There's our render. So I'm going to press Escape and just go to Compositing. I'm going to make sure I'm going to change this to the timeline down here. And yep, it's on frame 111, so that's good. So now all we have to do is if I press Shift A. 
come down to, where is it? I don't know where it is. Output, no, input, yeah, mask. Plug in that mask node. If I change, uh, select this drop down menu, there's our hand mask that we've created. If I just plug that into the factor. Uh, you can see now my hand is on fire, but we want the opposite of that. So if I press shift A and just search for an invert node, it inverts that mask and boom, there we go. That's what we want to see. You can see the effect our mask had. Now the fire looks like it's actually coming out of my hand. But like I said, there's all these jagged edges. So now I'm just jumping in a blur node, change this to fast Gaussian. And we'll do maybe four for each of these. And we can turn the scale way up or way down. I think one is good. And there you go. Now you can, you know, it's some of those fingers are disappearing, but that's what I was saying earlier. Because it's fire, it doesn't really matter. No one's really looking to see if some of those fingers are on fire because personally I think it looks sort of cool. But that's it. That's the effect we have going on there. Now we want to do, um, oh, so that's masking. Very easy. Make sure you have your mask node dropped in, inverted, and then a, this blur node so the mask gets blurred. And then just plugged into the factor of this alpha over node. Pretty easy stuff. And it looks cool. Now we're going to actually do some um, compositing quickly to make our fire a little bit better. I'm going to press shift A, go down to, I don't know where, I'm going to search for a glare, drop in a glare node. And we don't want too much. You could do streaks. I might do fog glow, see what that looks like. If I set this threshold to zero and sort of dial back on the mix, starting at negative one and just going back. Then maybe decreasing the threshold. That's pretty good. Let's see what streaks looks like. I might like that better. I don't know. The thing I'm worried about the streaks is just how you get sort of these side to side things. I don't think I want that. So I'll just leave it on a fog glow. Just so we have that nice glowing look going on. Oop. And that's nice. Um, what what's next? Now I guess some some basic just overall color correction. So we have our flame looking pretty good. Um, what I'll do now, I'll press Shift A, add in a color balance node, and I'll make sure it's after the alpha over. That way we're correcting the whole thing. And let's just do some basic contrast, taking the darks down a bit. Maybe dragging them to the blue just a touch. And normally you want to put the lights up, but since my footage was overexposed, I'm going to take the lights down a bit. Maybe the mids down too, just a tad. Just so my correct my footage a little bit. Um, you can play with it depending on what you have going on. Obviously you want the fire to be a little bit blown out because fire usually is. You also want to be able to tell that it's fire. <laughs> okay, I like that. I think that's cool. I might add in a vignette also. So shift A, uh, distort, lens distortion. Set that to a value of one. And then shift A, this is a uh, math node, so vector converter math. Change that to less than and a value of zero. And I believe you put it in the bottom. Could be wrong. It's top value of zero. There we go. And now a blur node. So distort, where is blur? I'm going to search for blur. Change it to fast Gaussian. We'll do a value of 55 for each of these and a size of two, just to get a pretty 
pretty soft on the edges. And then just a mix node set to multiply and boom. There we go. That's probably too much vignetting, so I'm gonna turn down the factor. Oh, there we go, had it on the wrong side. Turn down the factor. And there we go. And that is cool. So now what I think I'll do, um, before I just go ahead and call it final, obviously um, there are parts I didn't finish with the masking. You'll wanna go through and complete this mask. So, you know, go through every frame, follow it around just like we did, pretty easy stuff. Um, and other things you can do, I'm gonna to go to default and you can clear your bakes and go to smoke high resolution. I'm going to uncheck uncheck that for now. I'll also free bake so I can adjust as free all bakes. Smoke high resolution, change the divisions up and that makes it even um, cleaner fire and also the divisions of the resolution. If you turn that up, you get better fire. And um, I should have adjusted the material before I did anything. So now it's gonna play very slowly because I haven't baked it. But I wanna also make just some small adjustments to this fire. So I'll let it play a little bit before we get some fire in there. And you can see that even just changing the divisions to two makes it look even smoother and better and more realistic. I'm just gonna go ahead and pause that right there. Blender might freak out on me. Okay, there we go. Oops. I'm gonna drag this up. I'll press, I'll create a box, a render box. I'm gonna just press Shift B, drag that over just where the fire is and Shift Z. That allows us to just render that part. I'm gonna change this back to the node editor and just map out a little bit better of a flame. I, I wasn't too happy with our flame material here. Turn this up, make that a little brighter. Maybe change the value down to a four for the emission. Smooth out, smooth out this orange, orangey color here. I think that's that's a little better. I'm a little bit happier with that. It's all about just making those small adjustments um, that you want to make. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying there. So, what frame did we do our mask on? I think it was. Let's change. Let's check this. I'll check motion tracking. Frame 66. Yeah, it has a pretty good mask. I'm going to adjust this a little bit. So I'll hit record. Oops. I just want to end on a good final render to see what it looks like. So I'll move this in place. Rotate that a bit. All right. Now what we can do, just go to default. So if we just hit render there, and that renders out our fire with higher resolution, not necessarily higher samplings, You'll want to increase the samplings for your final animation. Boom, there we go, that looks cool. Holding the fire in the hand, and I'm happier with the result of that. But our effects aren't plugged in, so I'm gonna escape this render, and oops. Instead of everything going into the viewer, we want to add it to the composite too. And if we change this down here to the, um, UV image editor and just change it from change it to viewer node. Then you would you'd be able to actually save that image. Image, save as. That's it for this tutorial. There you go. That's how to create a simple visual effect of holding some fire in your hand. And hopefully I gave you the basic knowledge of uh, you'd be able to go out and create your own fire if you want to make that fire blue or green or whatever, by all means go for it. If any of you create something awesome um, send me an email and show it to me. I'd love to see that. Um, 
and you can check out my website for more tutorials. And if you like this, you could feel free to like and subscribe to YouTube. So again, thanks for watching and look forward to the next tutorial.